In that video we will review top graphic card from 6 line. Yeah, I know there is one better GPU in that line which has two chips. But today we will speak about GTX 680. Let's move back into the past. The year when it came is 2012. Seven years have passed since that moment. The GPU on Kepler architecture, direct competitor for that GPU, was a graphic card from AMD HD7970. All cards from 6 line built on new for that age technology 28 nanometers. Unlike of the 5th series, which has 40 nanometer technology, the graphic card frequency also rose to 1000 MHz, which was a big success, also had turbo boost technology. At the same time, Nvidia reduces the power consumption. For that huge frequency for that age, GPU needs only 195 watts, which was also an, an achievement. Once again, the memory capacity is low, also had a 4 gigs models, but the famous one is on 2 gigs, which is for 2019 is not too much. Much. But in that age, that was enough. On my hands, I have a GPU from Gigabyte, the WinForce model with three heat pipes, which has a contact with chip surface. This is a huge graphic card and takes a lot of space in a case, at the same time keeping a good temperature. Let's review specifications from official Nvidia website. CUDA cores we have 1563. The base clock is 1006 MHz. In boost, there is a 1056 MHz. The effective memory clock is 1600 MHz. Standard memory speed is 1500 MHz. Memory capacity is 2 gigs of GDDR5. Memory interface width is 256 bit. Maximum TDP is 195 watts. As I said before, I have a version from Gigabyte. Model WinForce has factory overclock. The core frequency in boost 1137 has 1.8 and 1.6 pin input. The graphic card also supports SLI. Officially working with 3 GPUs. Unofficially can work in a quad SLI mode. 4 inputs for monitor monitors, which means you can pair 4 displays, 2 DVI, 1 HDMI and 1 display port. Let's talk about test station. AMD Ryzen 7700, overclocked on 3.7 GHz, memory RAM in total 16, 2 sticks on 8 gigs each in double channel, working on 3200 MHz, all games working from SSD and the power supply 750 watts. I also overclocked the GPU, though it already has a high factory overclocking, it was pretty hard to get more frequency. So for core I added 60 MHz and 150 for memory. This is a small overclocking, but the frequency is a high by default and the temperature looks good anyway. I exclude CSGO from our test because there is more than 100 FPS in there. I recorded the video by using video capture card, so there is no any impact on the final FPS. The first game on our test is Fortnite, all on high and full HD resolution. The average FPS is 80, which is personally for me is enough. I think that on middle low settings, you can see over 100 FPS, which is would be good for gaming type monitors. The frame graph and time looks good, no any lags confirmed. The game runs well, so for Fortnite that graphic card is enough I believe. The second game on our test PUBG, all settings on high and full HD resolution. I took the vehicle and drove fast, in that case the FPS the lowest one. The FPS graph not perfect, but in average we have 60 FPS. Sometimes we have FPS drops to 40, but the gameplay feels good. We can see that 2 gigs of VRAM overloaded, I think this is a problem. But when you walk, no one lags or freezes there. The Witcher 3 on our tests, all settings on high and full HD resolution, fireworks turned off, the frame graph looks bad, tons of pulsations and macro stutters, but inside the game feels fine, sometimes I had rarely micro freezes, so on my opinion you can play like that. The average FPS is 43, inside the battle FPS lowered 32, and the graphic looks even worse, so we have a minimum 30 FPS here on high settings, but I will choose middle settings for more stable FPS. Tonight, 
The next game on our test is Battlefield 1. Ultra settings and full HD resolution. Very first scene on the tank here. In average we have 52 FPS. The game runs vigorously. No any big lags or freezes here. The frame graph looks fine. Video memory almost full. And the frame time is a high bit. But this is an ultra settings and full HD resolution. For single player game mod this FPS I believe is enough. But in online game mod you probably will see less FPS. Which is not enough. At least you need 60 FPS for comfortable game play so you have to reduce settings to low to get maximum fps here And the last game traditionally is Metro Exodus. The game is very hard for any GPU. 900p resolution and here is I forgot to turn off vertical synchronization. But actually that was a good decision. Because in other way it was a tons of pulsations on FPS graphic. I checked without vertical sync after the video and FPS was higher. But the gameplay was worse. So in our age we have a 32 FPS into the battle 26 ish. If you throw Molotovs everywhere you will see 22 FPS. The FPS best time is a high, frame graph also looks bad, but you can finish that game with that FPS, cause in other locations you will see more FPS, because there is one of the most hardest locations in the game. So as always conclusion at the end, I traded graphic card with broken fans for 40 US dollars, order it on Aliexpress cooler for 10 bucks and get the GPU for 50 dollars, that price for GTX 960 and I would prefer 960 actually, all links on it on description. Yeah, GTX 680 still can run games, feels hard but can run. So if you found that card for a penny and you have a good power supply, ok you can take it, but if not take 960 from Aliexpress. Express. Thanks all for watching that video, hope it was useful for you, do not forget to subscribe on my channel and see you in the next one.